Today, we're going to talk about starting a business that supports the life that you want to live. Very different mindset video here. Now, you see a lot of stuff here on the internet talking about how to start a business, how to make all this money, but you don't see, this is kind of what you see. Well, not kind of, this is exactly what you will see. You'll see entrepreneurs with very nice cars. You will see entrepreneurs with very nice houses. You would see entrepreneurs taking fantastic trips. And those are moments in your life. That's like a snapshot. That's not the totality of your life. And one of the things I want to teach you guys is how to create a business that supports the lifestyle that you want to live. Now, there's a few elements that we got to get into before we start cracking the top off of this content. Number one question. If money was not an object, what type of life would you be living right now? That's the question. Where would you be living? Would you be married? Would you not be married? Would you have children? Would you not have children? I want you to sit down and just think about this topic for a moment. Money wasn't an issue. What kind of life would you be living? Would you be part of a family? Would you be single? And this is really important stuff because I'm about to tell you something that is very critical in you living that life. Very important. As in the previous video talking about to get what you want in life, you must know what you want in life. We're heading back down that road. If you do not know what you want in life or you do not know what you want out of life, you're going to have a lot of problems. And this is where a lot of people are. They're in that point where they want the best life ever. They want to live well. They want to enjoy life. They want to have free time to hang out with friends and family, and they want to have the money. And that's an overview that's yeah i want to live a good life i want to have money i want to have the time to enjoy it i want to take these trips and that's a very overview very top of mind way to think of it that is not constructive in you getting that type of life let me give you an example this was a road map that i had set up at one point i was thinking about moving to California. And I think it was Madison Beach or Madox Beach. I can't remember exactly, but this is the plan. Seriously, I was like, I want to live in the California. I want to live in a house that has four bedrooms, sits on the acre. This was about four, almost five million at the time. I want to do what I'm doing. I had a very detailed precise list where what kind of house what color of the house how far from the beach this is the type of planning that you need to do to get that type of lifestyle you gotta know it and this is one of the things that I used to do really early on and I found it to be very helpful let's say you're a young guy let's say you're 25 you want to start a business you want to get you a ferrari or maybe a lamborghini you want to live in this house i would say if you're serious this is one of the things i would have you do right now it's kind of hard to look at houses and not be qualified because there's a shortage of houses so you might have some problems to look at a house with a real estate agent but to drive by a house that's empty without a real estate agent, that's not a problem. Now, with cars, this is what I want you to do. You want a Ferrari, you want a Lamborghini, you want a Porsche. I want you to go to the dealership and talk to a salesperson that says, hey, I am not going to buy today. However, in the future, it is my plan to buy this car. So I want to look at it and I want to test drive it. Don't lie. Don't make up anything and go ahead, test drive this car. And this is really important, very important. 
You may want a Lamborghini, you may want a Ferrari, you may want a Porsche, you may want a Bentley, you, and then you go to the dealership and you test drive this car and you find out very shortly that you don't like the car. That's very key and important because now that you have sampled the car and now that you know that you don't like the car, it is time for you to dream of something. Very, very important because you have so many people who have these dreams, these ambitions, these big goals, right? And they never actually sample, taste, or do anything with these goals. And then next thing you know, they are they have them and they're like, it's not what I thought it was. Recently, I cannot remember his name, but he's a rapper and he bought a very large house. They said it's a mansion. It's, in my opinion, it's just a large house. He's never lived in it. Now he's trying to sell it. This is the type of stuff that I'm talking about when you're operating from a high consumption of cash. You're going out, you're buying cars, you're buying houses, you're buying these stuff, and you don't even enjoy them. I remember another, I think she's a rapper. She wasn't able to drive and she was buying Ferraris and stuff. And I really wanna know how you gonna buy a Ferrari or a Porsche when you're not old enough to drive how are you going to ensure that she had to be buying these cars in someone else's name because most dealerships are not going to let you drive that car off the lot unless you're insured. So you have a lot of people out here who are playing around, buying stuff, and they don't really know if they want these things. They're not really aware or super tuned into these things. Like I said, I saw this article and he's like, never lived in the house. He just bought this house. He's been paying taxes on it. Now he's trying to sell it. And this is something else too. And this is something else we need to talk about. How rich folks live. Now, I'm gonna say this, just top of my head. There's 2,700 billionaires and around the world, I'm going to say there's probably a hundred million millionaires, hundred million. This is the United States, this is Japan, this is Europe, this is Germany. And we have a population base of the world of seven, almost eight billion. So the wealthiest people in the world do not compose 1% of the world's total population. Think about that. So what, where am I going with this? You, you see all these videos that are talking about how rich people live, how rich people live, and how rich people get down, and the things that rich people do that are put out by people who are not rich. <laughs> They're not rich. So one of the things that you would hear is that rich people invest their money this way and do this. There is a group of people who invest their money very distinctly and very differently, but these are not your average people. And once again, going back to an older video, what is rich? I define rich as an income of $250,000 or more a year. That's rich. Now, what is wealthy's 3.5 to 5 million net worth? That's wealth. So, when you start getting into those numbers, the population base drops dramatically. And I'm going somewhere with this, so stick with me. And you have a bunch of people here on YouTube. You have a number of channels talking about the wealthy and the rich and investing that are created by people who are not rich, seriously. And you see this and you see an exaggerated theory of what rich people do and how rich people live that has nothing to do with people who said, my name is such and such, and this is the type of life that I wanna live. I'm about to tell you a story. I have a friend who is worth, I would say 25 million with all his assets. My friend is, I think, 
He's 51 this year. He is married. He has three children. He drives a Hyundai, has a very large house. You could say mansion, mansion type house. His wife doesn't work. His kids are all in private school. And this man who's worth about 25 million, who drives a Hyundai, takes two to three trips a year. He doesn't have any rental properties. He doesn't, and this is what's funny. He goes to work in his company every day in his Hyundai. So there's someone who is bona fide rich, has the money to buy whatever. And he has a very average lifestyle that he wants. See, there's this theory that if you get rich, you gotta live this lifestyle. You gotta have the Mr. T starter chain. You, there are people out there who are worth a hundred million dollars. And if you saw them in public, you would have no clue. What I'm saying here is once you know what type of life you want to live, once you have that spelled out and then you go out and you make the money and live the type of life you want. Like me, I'll tell you another story. At one point I was had three cars and for me, from a personal standpoint, three cars was bummy for me. I didn't really enjoy having, let's go ahead and walk back. I did enjoy having three cars in the beginning because we were still in the honeymoon phase. But after I've had the cars for a while, and I'm speaking for personal preference, most cars I would probably ever have because I'm not a car collector is two that would probably be my number because I drive one, I drive another one. It works very well for me. When I had three cars, I didn't drive that third car that much. And it was a very expensive car. So for me, and once again, this is talking about the lifestyle that you want to live. For me, I could have a hundred million dollar net worth. I don't have a hundred million dollar net worth. And I would still have two cars because this is, because here, here's the thing, and I'm not trying to brag or boast, but let's say my net worth went to 200 million. My life day to day would not change, it just would not change because I'm already living life like I want to live life at this level. And maybe a few things would change, but it wouldn't be anything public. It really wouldn't be anything noticeable because I am living the life that I want to live. I am doing the things that I want to do and hear me and hear me very clearly. Once you get that figured out, once you get that hammered down, once you get that nailed down, where you understand yourself, where you understand what you want out of life. Because once again, I like, Someone, I went to a party this weekend and someone asked me about this watch. And at one point I used to have a bunch of watches, uh, Omega Seamaster. I had a bunch of, cause I was a watch collector at that time in my life. And I said, this watch and I have an Apple watch and these only watches I own. Because that fits into what I'm doing. I'm not trying to showcase or flex or do certain things that do not work within the lifestyle that I have created for myself. And once again, for many people, my day-to-day -day lifestyle would be extremely boring. I just live life, I get up, I work, and I go to bed. I go to bed quite early because that fits into the lifestyle that I personally want to lead. Now, the lifestyle that you personally want to live or lead may be a hundred percent different, maybe a hundred percent different. So what I'm saying is you need to really think, oh, and this is huge. The lifestyle that you want to lead in your twenties is going to be dramatically different than the lifestyle that you're going to lead in your forties and in your fifties. Cause like one of the things that I have a lot of credit cards that offer bonus points, I'm sitting on like, like a million American Express points and I use my bonus points to take trips for
for fun, to go somewhere to have a new experience, to enjoy life on a more fun vibe. That's probably gonna happen next October. So I'll be here. I have the ability to take trips. I have the ability to go places, but I don't because I'm living the lifestyle that I want to live. I'm living in the lifestyle that I personally want to live. Now for you, once again, the lifestyle I have may be extremely boring. This may not be the lifestyle that you want to live. But what I'm saying for you to live that lifestyle, for you to enjoy that lifestyle, you need to know what that lifestyle is. You need to know, you need to understand, and you need to have a firm understanding of what you want because everyone's different. Everyone wants to live a different lifestyle. So for you to get there, you must first figure out what that lifestyle is, what you need to do to get it. And one of the things that's very interesting is you need to know the cost of your lifestyle. Now, for me, the cost of my lifestyle is somewhat high. Running the numbers just off the top of my head, it takes me about 100K a year to live like I'm living. This is to drive the Porsche, the BMW, to live here, about 100K. And that, not with taxes out, about an average of 100K. So that's a fairly extravagant lifestyle for one person, two. My girlfriend is here. So one of the things is that's something that I enjoy I enjoy the time, I enjoy the moments, I enjoy the days. And you've got to go ahead and figure out what is that it works for you. Now, what I want you to do is to watch this video three or four times. I want you to subscribe and I want you to hit the bell notification and also stay in tune to this channel because there's a lot of things that are coming up very soon and you're gonna want a piece of the action. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.